When Ghana recorded its first cases of the novel coronavirus, news reporting took a different angle. The storytelling changed from just international news channels to local news outlets. As community media houses, City TV and City FM had to reposition themselves to present the COVID-19 story in a more analytical, informative and educative manner with regular updates. COVID did was to open our eyes to a lot of um, issues confronting society and so every day um, within the COVID period was an opportunity for, for us to learn new things about ourselves. There may have been new things um, that have existed but we really had not averted our minds to it. So, given what we were faced with, we normally would look at our resources and then see what we can do as an organization and as a team. And so that's what first prompted us um, into action. And most of the actions we undertook, again, would be as a result of the new knowledge that we, we received as associated uh, with, with the COVID. So that's why we did what we did and we thought that we also owed it to our community to contribute our quota, uh, which we did um, to, our, to our abilities. For some of the interventions, we had companies calling um, to contribute money, but we refused um, you know, directing them to also commit their resources to their own communities and within their own um, circles. So we, went, we were not expecting any resources from, from, from any quarters. We did what we did based on our own motivation and what we thought we owed to our community. And that's what we did, what we did. This was the beginning of series of activities, programs and interventions by the stations to contribute to the national fight against the coronavirus pandemic. The first one had to do with the fumigation exercise that we undertook. Um, so, first I saw watching television, international TV channels, I saw the Asian countries, you know, embarking on mass fumigations in their public, of, their, of their public spaces. And we thought that why not Ghana? At that time people were still battling over the theories of whether fumigation uh, was necessary or not. But we said why not? So we um, contacted Zoom Lion Company told them that look we wanted to do this we don't have the money but um, we could partner and do and uh, Mr. Japan uh, was, was glad to help and so they, they we came together with Zoom Lion first and foremost to go into our markets uh, so we, we had the Makola markets and then later the other markets followed in Accra after that again we thought that there was an opportunity to look at fumigating a tertiary institutions um, so that's again the next stop we went to tertiary education the plan initially was to do tertiary uh, institutions in Accra but we ended up doing over 22 tertiary institutions across the country again with the help and support of Zoom Lion um, now as I said this was based on our knowledge of how the COVID would spread and um, whether it was airborne, whether it's, it's rested on surfaces and open spaces. Again, talking about the health workers, we saw again that, look, these are people who are exposed because they are committed to doing the work that they've been called to do, health, providing health and support. 
And so we organized this um, virtual concert, we call it Rally Round the Flag, in recognition of their good efforts and the services that we were providing to the nation. So we called them, we, we actually called them out and celebrated them as health workers through the concerts that we did um, called Rally Round the Flag. In the outset of the pandemic, the scientific community and the World Health Organization, WHO, on 12 January 2020, recommended two main criteria for declaring someone who was tested positive as having recovered from the d disease. The first is that you no longer have symptoms. And the second is that you're no longer capable of infecting others. Initially, the scientific thinking was that as long as you continue to test positive, you're capable of infecting others. Hence the requirement for the two consecutive one element key to the fight against the pandemic is information dissemination. City TV and City FM ensured that every detailed information from government was shared with the public. This called for dedicated airtime to broadcast live all presidential addresses as well as a series of press briefings by the Ministry of Information from day one. There was a deliberate realignment of news programming to bring updates to the public through a specially designed coverage of the pandemic which aired daily at 3 p.m. Good afternoon, you're welcome to our special COVID-19 coverage. This is City TV. If you're listening to us on radio, you're on City 97.3. FM. My name is Abna Nyamichi Ampedu. 115 was from the people who were mandatorily quarantined. So 500 and something general surveillance, mm -hmm. 1,013 enhanced contact tracing. But look at the tests that are producing these cases. The routine surveillance, 543. Mm -hmm. The test conducted to get that figure was 22,054. Mm -hmm. So 22,000 tests, 543 are positive means that 68,000 individuals have been tested. And I'm just going to read the oh, quotes. play the video in a yes, bit. Yes, as well. But okay. I'm just reading the quotes that we have here. It says that each respiratory sample is accompanied by a case investigation form. Uh, people refuse to accept a sample if it does not come with a case investigation form because they need to understand where that particular individual came from. So based on the information we've, we've seen, mm -hmm. It's, it's, it points to the fact that we are collecting the data, even the number of contact traced in a day, mm -hmm. on the regional level, at the district level, they are collecting all that information, which helps us to make decisions in managing the case, in resource allocation and whatnot. Because the world has to move on. We don't know how long this is going to take. It could take about two years. You never know. So the world is not going to lock down for two years. So we have to just find the ways and live with the protocol. So it's about living cautiously. You want, to, you want to have your freedom, but still you exercise some caution without freedom because the disease is not gone yet. We know that a vaccine is a long-term solution. We're doing something called a double negative testing. You test the patient for two weeks. If they come out negative, you test them again before you release them. But now we've had the WHO protocol for releasing positive patients and our numbers have gone up drastically from 4,200. City is an intelligent media house. Traditionally, media talks about what has happened, so we report. But people also need to tell you why it happened. So we understand the difference between reporting information, going beyond information to giving people knowledge, right? So it's not just what has happened, how different is it from what was said yesterday? Okay, and what does it mean? That's also important. So that's the insight. So you move from data to knowledge. Knowledge to insight. Very important. And of course, it helped us learn as well because, because COVID is such an interdisciplinary thing. It's a health crisis. It's an economic crisis. 
it's a leadership test, but it's also a social problem. People can't go out to work. It leads to a lot of problems. So journalists are the best, and media houses are the best uh, prepared organizations to lead in that period. Because even if you're a biologist, you may not be able to understand the economic dimension of the issue. If you're an economist, you may not be able to understand the statistical side. So there are different things that come together. And we feel that whether it's social, economic, health, or political, because of all the information we get as a media house, we are best primed. And don't forget that a lot of people are home, so they are watching carefully. City TV is a new TV station. But I feel it was ground zero for everybody because they want to get information. So we had a consistent three o'clock program. What has the government said? What is happening on the ground? What does this mean? What does our own research show? How does it compare to the best global practice? You need that kind of information. Now, you can only do that if you have the mindset of, I want to learn. It's not as if, well, we are the champions. So we are just coming on air to say anything. So you notice that for a lot of us in the team that was preparing the COVID program, was like, we are going to write exams. Watch the press conferences very diligently. Do interviews and bring those interview experience into the program. I learned how to use my statistical tools again, calculating an R naught, state my assumptions, speak to people in China, what's happening in China. So bring all of that into one coverage. And I think the feedback we got shows that people value that. So the COVID-19 pandemic is new to all of us. I mean, nobody saw it coming. And of course, there was no um, written um, thing to guide you in whatever you did, wherever you found yourself, including media and for that matter, news. So when the uh, pandemic struck us, of course, it started with China one. Uh, I mean, at a point, we're not sure it's going to get you. And then, boom, it was in our face. The first cases were reported. I remember very well the uh, Minister of Health, together with the Information Ministry, announced it on a Thursday evening, saying that uh, we had two cases here in Ghana, one a foreigner, one a Ghanaian. And at that point, we knew the time had come for us to now localize the news. Of course, prior to that, it was an international news. So how do you cover a pandemic, which is one that is contagious, which is one you can pick easily, which knows no bounds, which uh, doesn't pick, oh, you're a news person, so it's not getting to you, you're a politician, it's not getting to you. And then now thinking of how to mobilize the news team to go out there to bring the story to viewers and listeners and all that. It was a very difficult and challenging task. Because um, if you remember, at the point when it started even the the medical bit people were not sure in terms of the levels and how you could pick it what we did as a station for for example was the first thing to think about was the safety of our journalists at the same time and um, given accurate news on the virus so health wise uh, data wise interpretation and then of course the economics of it so when we started taking our journalists out there we ensure that they were protected they wore the face marks they protected they themselves kept the social distancing thing uh, we had to bring in the boom mics to get them a distance between the people and all that and remember during this period we had to reduce numbers because of the social distancing protocol so we uh, on a normal day we're looking at uh, uh, at least 50 people that number had to drastically reduce so um, if uh, something that five people were supposed to do one person had to handle it because we didn't want a crowded newsroom which could easily lead to uh, the spread of the virus if anybody had it and so we had to do that the most difficult thing for me as an editor and uh, during that period was letting my um, team members go out to the field we all had to go but go out to the field you don't know who they were going to meet, meet what they were going to pick I mean all that and how they would deal with it if it should strike any of them so it was a difficult time uh, the other thing we had to you know deal with as um, 
an institution for that matter uh, news was to understand the virus and so that we could communicate well to our viewers and listeners so there was a lot of research a lot of reading a lot of collaboration a lot of discussions with people well vexed in the issues of health and for that matter uh, viruses and all that so we had to bring in a lot of people uh, like that we had a, a research team whose job was uh, doing that also feeding the news team as well with information so that we could uh, give you the right analysis to them, we could interpret it and, and all that. If you're sending people out there, one, you need to protect them. If you if there's a lockdown, you need to find and figure out how you're going to bring them. If this thing, you know, is coming from people, you need to protect them also from people. So we have to now think of how we're going to feed our journalists, how we're going to pick them from home and all that. And I must say that uh, the station was able to pull that off and I think we're one of the few who were feeding and we still feed uh, our team and then picking them from home and all that. So it was a very um, challenging period, very difficult period, but I think in the end we were able to pull it off to ensure that we informed our viewers and listeners on all they needed to know on this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Um, the fight still continues with this virus. It's not ended yet. Uh, we'll still keep our viewers updated in terms of um, what they should know, what they should do. COVID still remains a, a big conversation that City FM is still um, pushing in our news coverage. Our specially created web pages on COVID-19 became a reference point in the coronavirus discussions. Well, COVID-19 is a global pandemic and City FM and City TV, even though we are based in Accra, Ghana, we're a national media house and we are an international media house because if you look at our digital analytics, we have a lot of traffic coming in from other areas and people abroad would want to get um, dependable, a dependable source of news on COVID-19 in Ghana and analysis on COVID-19 in Ghana. So we created the dedicated COVID-19 page to give our audiences in Ghana the chance to have a place where they'll have all the updates and all the education, number one, and also to give our audiences abroad or globally the chance to also have dedicated COVID-19 related news from Ghana and Africa. So what we did was the page, when you go on citynewsroom.com, on the home page, you see our dashboard. And we modeled that dashboard after the Johns Hopkins dashboard because it became the international reference point. So we, we created a dashboard for COVID-19 updates in Ghana so that people will easily get the breakdowns of the figures. And then there was a dedicated coronavirus page, that's the citynewsroom.com, forward slash coronavirus, where you get all the news and the updates. And also on that particular page, we put interactive um, dashboards and charts there so that people will get the updates and the figures. What we also did was we, we created a COVID-19 help guide to give people detailed information about COVID-19, what to do, what not to do, and how to keep your family, your office, and yourself safe. We did all that to ensure that people would be comprehensively informed, effectively educated, so that we play our role as a media house in, in, in helping the global fight against the pandemic. Yes, we are still going to have the slot on the website. We are still going to have the page on the website because even though COVID-19 has been with us for globally for six months and in Ghana for about three to four months, and if you check the media, a lot of media houses are moving on to go and do other things. We are still keeping our COVID-19 page so that people will still get the updates and the education, the videos and the insights. Now, this is it. When we started reporting COVID-19 cases in Ghana. Even the Ghana Health Service didn't have an interactive chart to update people. We were the first media house that invested in having an online portal dedicated to COVID-19 because we believe that the education must go and the information must also go. So we are going to keep it and we are going to constantly and regularly update it as we've done in the past so that people will still get the information the analysis, the articles, the videos, and everything related to COVID-19. That is our role in helping the, the, the fight against COVID-19 globally. Fellow Ghanaians, effective 1 a.m. on Monday, 30th March, some 48 hours from now, I have imposed, pursuant to the powers granted the President of the Republic under the Imposition of Restrictions Act, 
2020 Act 1012. Restrictions on movement of persons in the Greater Accra metropolitan area, Gama, which includes Awutu Senya East Municipality, and the Greater Kumasi metropolitan area and contiguous districts for a period of two weeks, subject to review. The President's announcement of a partial lockdown as part of measures by the government to curtail the spread of the virus meant extra work for the news team and the stations in general in reporting to the public what was happening outside. City TV's cameras were on the streets to capture the scenes. Samina <laughs> If you are talking about the volume of traffic and the level of human activity during this lockdown, how do you make of it? Yes, even though it is highly stressful, but then the life of human beings is so pertinent and therefore the measures is so deemed to be very important. You think that not, the lockdown is not necessary? It's not necessary. We have to eat and eat and chop, work and eat. If you chop, work and eat and die, which one is good? And stay home, eat and sleep and live. We Africa doesn't discern about all those virus that they are thinking about in this our language. For the many people who were locked out during the period, someone had to carry their frustrations and concerns through the appropriate authorities. And this City TV and City FM availed themselves for. Lockdown comes lack of food for many who would have to move around town, work daily for survival. These people, homeless people, headquarters, Kaya as they are popularly known as, and other members of the society who do not have the means would be the hardest hit during this two-week lockdown. There is a private coalition under the COVID-19 private sector-led coalition, a team that comprises members from all the political parties, members from private organizations, and they have been touring various parts of Accra, distributing food to homeless people, to hawkers, to other members of the community who may not be able to uh, provide for themselves during this lockdown. Beyond covering the news, City TV engaged in other interventions to help with the fight. It came to the fore during our news coverage on COVID-19, the plight of frontline health workers in accessing decent transportation, especially during the lockdown. This City TV sought to intervene by providing four hired and branded buses to transport health workers from various stations in Accra to their places of work. This was applauded by health workers and Ghanaians in general. However, this joy was short lived as government took over the intervention hours before takeoff. This did not stop the stations from helping with the fight against COVID 19. The government's attempt to ensure the public adhered to safety precautions fell on deaf ears. The flagrant disregard for social distancing and the wearing of masks was a clear evidence of inadequate education on the pandemic to the public. City TV once again stepped in. This time, 
the station dedicated a COVID-19 branded vehicle to embark on public education in various communities. This was done in various local languages to drum home the message well. As health experts anticipate that COVID-19 will exist for a while longer, City TV and City FM will remain committed to updating Ghanaians on all news platforms until the fight is won.